Hello, good morning. I came out here last night and I thought I'll just drain the oil so it kind of, you know, got all night to drain down. Last night I came out and popped all the valves loose. The inlets came out very easily using a tyre lever and the exhausts all... Um, the, the valve guys all came down after a little bit of persuasion and um, I managed to get all of those out. I could put them on a boot lace, but I, I will want to dismantle the valves from the spring so I want to do them and keep them knowing which one is which. So I've got 16 bags and I'll put, I'll call this number one, that number two, number three, number four and so on like that. I want to get the cam out so I can do a machining job on the cam. I need to take these studs out as well. Maybe I could try and see if they'll come out. Right, I'll leave it at that because we're going to take the dog out. So I'll. Uh, I'll catch you later when there's a bit more to do. Okay, cheers then, bye. Hello, uh, I've got the flatty out the roadster in the in the uh, engine stand. I've flipped it upside down. I'll just give it a quick wipe over with, um, you know, put some, give it a spray with the elbow grease and give it a quick wipe over so it's not so messy. You can see here where I went a bit mad with a hammer years ago knocked down the oil pan uh, but you can also see here what this is what I intended to show is a cutout this was cut out and had a piece of sheet metal put in this is to clear the radius arm when you've got a car like mine which runs a oh, you can't see it but You've got the wishbone down there, the wishbone, and you've got it running really low, like that, with a flattened spring. The wishbone can hit on the oil pan at this point here, so you can make this modification there to clear. So I will continue disassembling this motor and I will uh, bring you back when there's something more to show. Right, so I've um, taken the oil pan off and it, it's all looking okay in here. Um, can you see that I used these nuts? They're like what you use on like Jaguars and things like that. Got those off eBay. Um, but what I can also see is I appear to have made some um, tab washers. These are homemade. Just got the one thing bent up there. So that's interesting. What you can also see is where I've modified the oil pickup. That's the French one. Shortened down and welded up. You can see there's a join under there. There's a join there. No, I think that's it. There's two joins there, but you can make this pick up from the French one. There's also a little magnet there, look, which appears to have one or two little bits on it. So, yeah, yeah, not looking too bad under here. Looking okay. I can't remember where this flywheel came from, but it's a 10 inch clutch. It's got a one piece oil seal there as well. Oh, these pistons are all modified to clear the crank. Okay. I'll continue to start taking things apart then. Back in a bit. I've continued to dismantle the motor. No need to film any of it because nothing of it was out of the ordinary. All the pistons came out, no problem. Uh, pistons, rods all came out. I lifted the crankshaft out and I did it like I did it the last time which was to 
have the motor vertical lifted it out turn around put it down I can feel some wear on this crank there's like a, a ridge and that not there must be the non thrust face but I can feel it under there for instance and I can feel it on top of there there is some wear in this crank but overall it's not a bad crank I have taken all the pistons and rods out and they're in there and it occurred to me that I'm not going to use these rods or these pistons in this motor so they can stay as assemblies and probably get used again in another motor I've just taken the rear main bearing out and this came out from between the main bearing and the block it was in that position there and this was a bit of a codgery that I did to stretch the bearing to take up a bit of end float because there was too much end float the French cranks when they used to regrind them they tended to just lick the sides and they ended up with too much end float it's a common problem and this did the trick temporarily it's got like a chamfer on it there that's because it sat in that area there where that where that chamfer is to keep it from coming out it was formed to just go there and it did the job and it did the trick and it might get used again but I thought I'd show you that because that's <coughs> pardon me a little bit out of the ordinary this is the uh, Schneider cam looks nice and shiny looks you know as new so that can come out but what I can also see here that that looks like a new gear and I do remember buying a brand new gear and that must be it so I bought that and fitted it on this engine so the motor is more or less stripped down now just the cam to come out and um, I can give it a quick wash and then start setting it up for boring fingers crossed hello I've just put the boring bar on the engine block and this engine block is at 3 and 5 sixteenths I wound out the cat's paws here I don't know if you can see them coming out and the problem is that they they don't come out to the ball now I've only got this one set of cat's paws I don't have any others so what I need is something to go between the cat's paw and the cylinder wall so what I've just done in the lathe good old lathe I got this piece of tubing heavy wall tubing and I have it was I'd only got that much I've skimmed the OD and I've bored the inner diameter so the inner diameter and the outer diameter are concentric um, so what I'm going to do now is take it out I'm, I'm going to cut it into three pieces so I can insert one piece in the bore by each cat's paw and the wall thickness will be equal at any of the three points so it should serve to centre up the boring tool just an illustration of a quick little job in the lathe just trying to stress how useful a lathe is okay back in a bit I've managed to get them in place because I left a little lip on the outer edge they, they just sit against the edge of the bore I thought I'll leave a little lip so they can sit there so this is now centered in the bore it rotates about that now I need to get this sitting so I can clamp it kind of centered along the bore line okay so that's clamped in position now I'll retract the things and take out my adapter pieces there there's the adapters just because they've all got the same wall thickness because they're all turned in the same process in the lathe you know outside turned and inside board this is the tool 
This is modified from a lathe tool. I'll start with a new tip. I think what I'll do, I'll um, I'll concentrate on getting my method right, and then I'll film it when I'm on one of the subsequent ones. So I've had a couple of practices because it's too much to try and think through. You know what has to be a very careful process when you've got the camera rolling. So I'll bring you guys back when I've knocked one or two out, and uh, you know we're moving along. Back in a bit. Hello, the boring bar is running, running away nicely. Um, I'm just on my last cut on this side. It's a very light cut, only about six thousand. Um, you might be able to make out that the boring bar is almost at the back. It's about an inch away. Look, because that's the thing. Yeah. I'll stick the camera underneath. Just a very light cut. There's one of the clamps there. Look. Nice big bores. There's one of the pistons there. Look. Goes in. It's got between two and a half and three thou at this point here. So I'm going to hone it. Well, I'm going to hone it anyway. So when I've honed it, it should be like three, three and a half down. Oh, yeah, it's just finished. Look, you just heard the noise stuff. This bore here, number seven, I goofed. My, my first cut was much heavier than I intended and um, I've gone out to size on the first cut. But I stopped it because I realised it was heavy. So there's about three quarters of an inch at the top. But what I'll do, I'll, I'll move the boring bar and I'll, I'll show you that. Hopefully it'll be okay, and once it's honed, if there's like a thou or so just at the top. When I sent the cutter through it on the finished size, it just barely touched the part that I'd done at the top. Somehow I managed to send it through at the finished size when I was when I thought I was doing one of my rough cuts. Anyway, hopefully that is four bores done now. I will hone them all to size on this side while it's vertical and then I'll swap over and do the other side all in, you know, in one session. So there you go, there's the, there's the boring machine. The old Buma, the vintage Buma. Excellent piece of kit. Okay, righto, I'll bring you back when there's more to show. I have taken the boring machine off. There's the boring machine. And I have honed these cylinders. And I, I used my electric, I used my electric drill with a three stone hone. I've never used that one before actually. What I did, I, I suspended it from the from the roof on a elastic strap. It sort of counterbalanced the weight, and I was able to just do that without having to lift it every time. I'm quite pleased with the way it's come out. I think it's okay. Um, there's a little bit of a faux pas on that bore, but I've got away with it. That one's all right. That one's all right. Um, I, I don't know how I managed to do it. My first cut was actually on size. So you can can you see it like a little change in the 
in the uh, sort of surface finish there. That was done as a roughing cut down to there. Then I realised something was wrong and I carried on. And um, I've got about half a thou difference between this area and that area. So I've honed it and you can't... You can't feel a step. There isn't. You can't feel a step. Luckily, so I'm very, very lucky to have got away with that. I thought I'd took it out too big at the top. I thought I'd basically scrap the job, and that was the third one I did. So I very, very carefully checked all my measurements when I did this one, and this one's came out come out okay. What I need to do now then is um, hold it up on the engine hoist, flip the stands to the other side and uh, repeat the process on the other side. What I have got here is some sort of weird pattern on the valve seats. I didn't do a very good job of the valve seats when I did them before. I was struggling with the cutters to be honest. And I believe this engine does have valve seat inserts on every valve. Because I was... I was putting forward... A statement saying that... French motors have valve seat inserts. And... Other people who, who do know a lot about it were saying, no, no, they don't. And I was thinking, well, I'm sure mine did, you know. Because I, I struggled to cut these seats. And I think the result of that conversation was that some French engines had valve seat inserts put in during rebuild as necessary. This engine has them across the board. They are all inserted. So this engine, when it was rebuilt, had a full set of valve seat inserts. This engine... I've got three of these engines and this engine was the only engine that was on its third iteration of rebuilds which means 30 thou on the mains, 30 thou on the um, big ends and 45 thou on the bore, this was a 45 thou engine the others I've got had smaller bores and uh, were only ground 20. So I don't know if when it came to the third iteration of rebuild, whether a full set of valve seat inserts were um, put in as a matter of course. But it's funny that this engine has 16 valve seat inserts. Of the two other engines I've got, one's got none and one's got one. So it was probably a, on a as needed basis and then possibly I mean I'm, I'm only guessing I'm only guessing on a it's just part of the was part of the rebuild procedure for the third rebuild right and I'm quite happy with these and I've got three and a half thou clearance on that piston there I can just get my my feeler gauges in set to three and a half thou so it's more than three less than four I will carry on and bring you back when there's more to show Hello, I've put the engine up the other way so I can do the second bank. This is cylinders one to four. Um, I noticed in this cylinder some water damage. You can see three distinctive bands there. And you can see this um, thing here. As if water has come from here, dribbled down the cylinder like that and then sat on the piston down there and then that's uh, you know that's just the and a similar mark in that bore there look you see like a dribble mark down there at an angle and um, that comes from leaving it sitting for long periods of time the car that this was in this car the roadster sat sat under a tarp for long periods of time it just shows that it's better to use them than leave them parked up i mean it survived and it ran okay luckily there wasn't a lot more though 
Okay, I'm going to lift the boring bar on. I don't know whether it's me, but it seems really heavy lately. <laughs> I lift the boring bar on and start doing some of these. Okay, righto, back in a bit. I set the machine running and it's nearly at the bottom. You can see it's about that far up from the bottom. I went, I went in the house and made a cup of tea. <laughs> That's how long it takes. I think the water was already warm in the kettle though. I think my wife had made one so. I think it's about seven minutes from top to bottom. And I, I realised that on the first side I was going a bit heavy on the cuts on the on the the first cut. Uh, I've realised that it's roughly about sixty thou that's coming out. So I'm doing twenty thou on the first cut, twenty thou on the second cut. Then I'll do ten thou and ten thou, four cuts. You could probably do more, but this machine chatters and vibrates if it's if it starts struggling I think the cuts I was trying to do were heavier than I thought that's just hit the, there's a little notch in the cylinder at the bottom that intermittent cut is where it's going over the notch and now it's just got to the bottom my little spacers that I made have been working well for centering the bore back when there's more to show it's just a, a very repetitious job now so I'll keep going okay I've done that one and I've done that one under there part way through that one and I've got that one to do and um, but I've already done all those there so that that's good oops but all those are done those four so good progress and um, I'm, I'm getting a better sort of routine so I will bring you back as always when there's more to show Cheers then, bye. Hello. This is the seventh bore. So I thought I'd just put the camera there to show you how the setting procedure works for the tool. So here's the micrometer. That locates in a hole in the bottom and swings round. That locates in a hole in the bottom of the thing and swings round like that. Okay. This Allen key locks and unlocks the tool, and this tool I put in the back. You can't see that, I don't think, on that image, but I put that in the back to push on the tool. So with my left hand, I, I hold that thing with my thumb. So what I do, I zero the thing down onto it, right? So I unlock the tool I hope you can see the numbers on this that there is 3.350 that is 3.3 that is 3.350 and that is 3.375 that is my finished size and the last setting was there because what I've been doing yeah you have to I'm taking approximately 60 thou so my first cut is around about there that's 3.335 my second cut is about there which is 3.505 that's 3.505 
that's 20 thou more 35 to 55 then I'm going to go halfway between that and the finished cut so I'm going to go approximately to 15 there and then I'll finish off by going approximately to 25 but I know on this machine I have to kind of cheat it a bit so I have to go like two thou less like that so that will be my finished cut and this cut is going to go here at 15 but I'm going to cheat it down like that I'm going to I'll go two thou less like that maybe maybe I'll go halfway and do it nine thou less I'll cheat it by one on this cut because the last cut was on the five so this will be nine thou more which is only five thou aside there we go what you have to do of course is to make sure that you remove the tool <laughs> I was very lucky that I was able to find that micrometer separately to the boring tool because it's a very um, you know important part of the kit. So what I do now, I, I rotate the tool to about there. I'm looking at the finish, the finish looks okay so I'm not going to try changing the tip. Now I'm up at the top of the machine and I'm winding down I'm winding down up here and because I can't see very well I'm going to put my finger on the tip there so I'm winding that down and when it just starts to pinch my finger there I know it's just above the um, sur surface so I'll turn it on and let it start cutting I decided to do these in four cuts, so it's approximately 60 thou, so it's 20, 20, 10, 10 in round numbers. And the tool life is a lot better, and there's a lot less chatter using these lighter cuts. I'm not a production facility, I, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if it takes a bit longer. I don't have to hog it out. Okay, good. I thought I'd just show you that. Hopefully that will come out. Right, see you later. And there's more to show. Hello. Right, I hope I have kind of got the setup on show now. I'm going for the final cut now. I've just I've just checked the um check the dimension of this this one and it is about what I expect. So I'm backing off this Allen key and pushing with my thumb on the I'm pushing with my thumb on the little tool there. I'll show you that when I bring the camera away. I've got to go two thou less on there. One two and then lock that up back it off bring it back yeah that's two thou down on the size that's the difference between this and the actual size when measured okay good that's the that's where I've just set it two thou less oh it's it's the lights blowing it out that's 
3.375 and on this micrometer I have to go 2 thou less to get the bore to my size ok right this will be the last cut on this bore this is this is where I wind the thing up and down here with this I've had to modify this because it um, the nuts won't release so I wind it with this Tommy bar and when you turn it on there with that old-fashioned switch this nut rotates and as it is at the moment it's taking that screw with it when I stop the screw from turning there the head the head winds itself down the screw can you see it's winding down the screw and now it's just starting that cut it's only a very light cut it's about nine pounds But it is cutting. Okay, back in a bit. That's about ten fair aside. Because this micrometer measures on the radius. Um, but measures as a bore it's kind of it's it's like double scale it measures twice as fast as a normal micrometer okay we'll leave that to run and then I'll complete the job okay I'll uh, bring you back when the job's done cheers then bye okay last hole last cut um, there's the micrometer setting two fair less than 25 3 3.3 3.35 3.375 less two thou that's it and for the last cut I had to turn the tip round it kind of started chattering part way down the cut so I turned pulled it back turned the tip round so that's a fresh tip that has just done one cut so it should do too easily so fingers crossed I'll turn it on and let it take the last cut on the big inch flatty There we are, that's the last cut on the block there. It's quite late here tonight so I'm going to, uh, I'll leave this all like this and I'll come back in the morning and take it all down and I'll do the honing on this side. Fingers crossed, everything's okay. Um, I, I was just thinking as I did this bore, this, this, uh, this bore that this machine has probably paid for itself sort of three or four times over by now I can't remember what I paid for it but I know how much it would cost to have this block bored and when you consider that the other two blocks that I've bored with it had to be linered uh, that would have been a much more expensive job and those were two engines so there's two engines with liners all eight this engine board the engine that I put in the truck bored on one cylinder so this this um, vintage Bumer boring tool has paid for itself ten times over 
already just on three engines really okay thanks a lot then i'll bring you back when i've done a little bit more cheers then bye hello i've just honed number one cylinder and it's come out okay so i thought i'd show you how i did it on number two now i am self-taught i don't know if i'm doing things right but I'm doing it in a way that appears to work okay for me anyway. So if any expert engine builders are watching and would like to offer some advice, I'm willing to receive it. But as an amateur, this is kind of working. So I'll show you what I just did. Can you see that the drill hasn't got a battery in it? You can't quite see that, but that's because I took the battery out because can you see that there's a cable tie? On the trigger, I've got the trigger set to a certain speed. So I'm going to put the things in the bore. In here, I have some paraffin. Because I was told that that's a good honing medium. That kind of sits. Maybe let's just come this way a little bit. That kind of sits more or less naturally there. By using plenty of um, paraffin, it kind of flushes it nicely. Years ago, when I was an apprentice at um, the Austin at Longbridge, the guy that ran the honing machine said the secret to honing is lots of fluid. Lots of good fluid, always flushing it through. Okay. So I'll kind of wipe that clean now. Not clean clean, but clean enough for me to kind of carry on with the next little bit before assembly you'd want to clean it a lot more than this now I don't know if this is right but I'm going for between three and four thou of clearance and you have to measure it on the on the at 90 degrees to the um, pin when it goes in the hole this one feels a bit loose actually when it goes in with the three a little bit tight There's probably better ways of doing this. Mm. You don't want to go in with a four. This one goes in, but it is a bit tight. That goes in, you see. That's about what I'm aiming for. A slightly tight fourth out fit. So I'll hone this one a bit more now. Having this suspended on the elastic makes it a lot easier than otherwise. And having the trigger pulled by the clip by the uh, cable tie makes it a lot easier as well. Okay, 
So this is the fourth out feeler. I don't know how much honing you have to do to sort of, you know, get a thou out of it. Oh, that goes in now. That's slightly tight on the fourth hour, but at least it does go. Yeah, that goes in with the fourth hour feeler. So, and it didn't before, so I have altered the size. It was slightly easier to put the feeler on the relief there because it, the other skirt is already engaged. Like that, it's, it's slightly easier, so there's another little lesson learnt. Okay, good. Okay, you don't need to see any more, it's just re repetitious, so I'll bring you back when there's more to show. There's the last one, and that's um, a reasonable sort of tight fit on the um, fourth thou. So they're all done to a, a tight fourth thou and an easy three thou. And I'll just tell a couple of little tips that I've even just picked up while I've been doing it. Like I say, I'm, I'm a beginner at this. One, don't bother even washing them out before trying the fit. Just leave it wet, it, it's, it's easier. The, the, the other thing is put the drill on low speed so it's spinning faster because because it's running at low speed on the high speed it's run the motors running low speed it tends to get hot if you put it on low speed the motor can run faster and it runs better and I, I did that last one you, know, you always kind of learn on the last one don't you so this side's done the other side is done I will double check the other side now that I've kind of honed my technique, if you forgive me. So I'll clean this side now and um, I'll put the engine into the stand because I believe I've finished all the bores now. But I'm looking at my valves and I did like a valve job on this. You know, ten or ten years? No, no, maybe not ten years ago. Probably about eight years ago. And I had a lot less tools then than I have now. Uh, and I'm not happy with some of the things that I can see. So I'm going to, while it's kind of, you know, in its messy state, uh, I will do some valve work and some port work. I'm not going to port it to death like a proper racing engine. People that do prepare racing engines spend a lot more time on them than I am prepared to do. Um, I'm just going to make sure everything's clean and tidy. I'm going to equalise all the bowls and um, just just make sure all the ports are nice and clean without going mad. Okay, so another stage completed and on with the next step okay right thank you very much for watching that's the boring job over with um, once again I can't believe how well I've done with that vintage boring machine the thing was virtually seized up when I got it I had to free it all up put new bearings in it do some repairs to the motor I mean I'm way out of my element with uh, electrical stuff okay good thanks very much then take care i'll catch you next time bye